very close look. Things got really heated yesterday. It's actually been quite heated for the build-up for this entire fight. He's got it! He's got it! three rounds in the EFC Africa middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist making his pro debut. He stands 1.77 meters tall and weighs in at 82 kilograms. He's fighting out of Deep River Cape Town. Introducing Bruno the Major Mukulu. And now introducing his opponent. He's fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a K-1 specialist, holding a professional record of one win. He stands 1.85 meters tall and weighs in at 83 kilograms. He's fighting out of Silverton, Pretoria. Drickus still knocks Du Plessis. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the hexagon is Pavan Ramkalawan. The lovely EFC girls proudly brought to you by RDG, driven by perfection. Ready? Ready? Let's fight! The start of this bout is presented by Carnival City Casino and Entertainment World. Come play in the blue shorts, Duplessis and Kulu in the black shorts. A big kick from Duplessis to open up proceedings. Looks so confident. Mukulu in a very traditional wide stance. Inside leg kick by Strickers. Another one from Duplessis. Mukulu catches the foot and now tries to close the gap. This is Kulu now trying to get Drikas onto his back. Drikas straight back to his feet, though. Needs to be careful for his head here. Does Mukulu. Drikas has got that guillotine lock. He's got it locked in. If he can get his one arm in there. Bad spot for Mukulu. This is in tight. Tuplessi holds on here. If he can get his hands clasped together, it's going to be a tough spot for Mukulu to get out of. Looks like now he's got he those hands that. clasped. Tough spot for Mukulu. Oh, manages to escape out of it, but his head is still not in a great position. Drikas now again stands back up. Looks for the takedown, but he's sticking his neck out there. Drikas immediately tries to get that underhook in. Strength shown from Kulu. Trick is now trying to get half guard back. Kulu inside control. Trick is again tries to get back to his feet. Kulu tries to set up for a Kimura. Trick is out of trouble though. Trying to get the mount now. Does. Duplessis, Kulu still got a hold of that wrist, if he... He's clinging to it, isn't Kulu? Trigger should be fine here. Now he's in full mount, bad spot for Mukulu to be in. Trigger tries to land big elbows from the top, went straight to the canvas. Two minutes, 30 seconds to work still now, Drikas has got his back. He's got it. All That's it. In. Gets the rear naked choke. Gets win number two of his EFC Africa career. Submits the major at EFC Africa 23. How good is this guy? 19 years old. What a talent, dude. 2-0. And tonight, he showed everyone that he's got a ground game as well. Fight is only the world's leading MMA and lifestyle mag presents this action replay. Well, Makulu was just turning, gave up his back, and Drikas almost had a, a, a body triangle locked in, but he was very quick to get the choke and flatten him out. 
and he got the submission very, very quickly after that. The trademark celebration of Trickus Duplessis. Full of smiles is the 19-year-old from Team CIT. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Pavan Ramkalawan has called a stop to this contest two minutes and 34 seconds into round number one. Declaring the winner by tap out due to a rear naked choke, Drickus Steel Knox Duplessy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live! This is EFC Africa 24. Our first main card bout is three rounds in the EFC Africa middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a K-1 champion with a professional record of two wins and no losses. He stands 1.85 meters tall and weighs in at 83 kilograms. He's fighting out of Silverton, Pretoria, Drickus Steel Knox Duplessis. And now introducing his opponent. He's fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional fight record of two wins and one loss. He stands 1.82 meters tall and weighs in at 83 kilograms. He's fighting out of Centurion Pretoria, J.C. Lambrecht. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the hexagon is Vickers Swart. The lovely EFC girls proudly brought to you by RDG, driven by perfection. Laura, Rihanna, and Victoria. <laughs> Maxim Magazine brings you round number one. Maxim, what guys want? Lamprecht in the blue and black shorts. Duplessis in the blue trunks. It's the middleweights. Inside leg kick by Lamprecht. Oh. Really and Drick has caught him with the head kick, landing a couple of straight shots. Lamprecht so tough though, didn't even feel it. Quick head kick by Drickus. This is definitely the biggest test of his young MMA career. Both fighters determined. Inside leg kick by Lamprecht again. Drickus is stalking. Takes the center of the hexagon. Lamprecht coming in, closing the gap. Now Drick is landing some shots, and Lamprecht coming over the top with one of his own. It's frantic stuff. Another, another hit kick landed by Drickus. Drickus did the sea, looking so dangerous. Frantic pace early on in this fight. Lamprecht busy all the time. Looping punch by Lamprecht closes the gap. Now we're in the clinch. Drickus looks for the takedown, but Lamprecht lands up on top in full mount. This is a terrible spot for Drickus to be in. See him holding on for dear life. He's going to have to try and get at least half guard back. With Lamprecht going for that high mount. Looking to unleash some ground and pound as Lamprecht. This is what we saw in the Jason Colwell fight, a very similar position. Oh, he Drickus escapes. manages Duplessis. to escape though. Lamprecht tries to jump on his back. Drickus jumps on his back, he goes for a guillotine. Oh, slams Lamprecht's head into the canvas. Lamprecht in top position, he is inside control. Drickus trying to shrimp, trying to get, possibly look at getting that half guard. Lamprecht continually busy, That's still fine. inside control. 100 miles an hour, Dirk. Try to get it back, saying now we've got Drickus on top. Lamprecht with elbows from the bottom. Yeah, it's been incredible. The adrenaline frantic, is rushing. Frantic pace. Lamprecht. Looked to shoot up for an armbar, pulled out of it. I've seen it all, Dirk. And we're halfway through round one. Clinch stand up and some groundwork. Drick is landing some shots of his own from the full guard. He'd want to look to Porsche and get into a better position. Lamprecht going for the triangle. Drick is might be in trouble, yeah, if he doesn't 
pop out of this. We've seen a couple of guys in the past just get a little bit lazy and too comfortable in that position. Lamprecht is trying to get it on. Duplessis trying to evade the triangle. Drikas want to move across to the other side. Now Lamprecht trying to isolate that left arm, push it back and complete the triangle. Out of danger now is Drikas coming over the top with an elbow. <laughs> Amazing effort from both fighters. Lamprecht goes to the sweep and ends up right into mount. Drikas just flips him right over. The strength of Duplessis. And now Lamprecht has got him in the rear naked. That's not good for Duplessis. Minute 30 to go. He's flattened him out. JC Lamprecht. Drikas has got that left hand isolated of Lamprecht though. Now Lamprecht has got his hooks in. Try to get it over under control, which he's got. Look at him trying to soften up Drikas here with some shots and then try and set up for that choke. Again, Lamprecht flattens him out completely. Minute to go. Fired up Lamprecht. Has Lamprecht. Drikas manages to get off and spin around and now he lands up on top. Incredible composure displayed by Drikas. Less than a minute remains here in round one. It's been action packed stuff. Big punches landed by Drikas. To be seen set up for another triangle. He's got that wrist control. This Lamprecht, let's go of it. As we look at him trying to set up the Kimura on the left hand side of Drikas. Tremendous, tremendous pace to this fight. Both fighters putting everything on the line, Dirk. 20 seconds to go. Drikas has got an arm triangle. Lamprecht manages to pull out of it though. He's out of trouble now. 10 seconds remaining. Drikas tries to flip him over and he does so successfully. Catches Lamprecht. Big shots landed by Drikas. That brings round number one to a close. What a hell of a fight so far. <laughs> Smile on the face of JC Lamprecht. He knows he's in for a war tonight. Wow. I have to wonder if they can keep up that pace through the second and third rounds. Corner Camps brought to you by One Plan Health Insurance, affordable health care for more South Africans. It's crazy on the ground, just the amount of reversals and sweeps. And JC was in full in, in, in mount, and Drick has worked. He went straight back into mount, landed some shots from ground and pound. JC threatened with the triangle choke. Incredible. And JC Lamprecht on his feet already. Raring to go for the round number two. This is the biggest test of Duplessis' young career. Just 19 years of age. JC Lamprecht, only 21. Bodes well for talent. The EFC Africa in the middleweight division. Round two gets underway with Maxim Magazine. Get your copy today. Expect a similar approach, Dirk? Drika seems to be breathing quite a bit harder than Lamprecht here. Yeah? Think of that adrenaline in the start of the Big fight. shots by... Leonard by Drikas. And a nice counter punching by Drikas. Now Lamprecht tries to get that takedown. Good sprawl by Drikas. Lamprecht back is Drikas. Big knee to the body. Now he's in mount. Lamprecht trying JC to escape tries here. tries to roll. Tied up, but he should be able to pop his head out. Start working on offense. Plenty of time to work. Now JC gives up his back. Drikas looked like he wanted to sink in that choke. Work here, land some shots. Softening JC Lamprecht up. JC has got Drikas tied up at the moment, but he's still in that mount position. Kanuri's corner, feet to the cage. I want him to wall walk and try and throw Drikas off of him. 
Landed another shot. Looks like he got that arm in underneath. Does look that way. You can hear Lamprecht's corner saying that Drikas is tired. He was breathing heavy at the end of that first round. Lamprecht skates, skates out, the, out back. the bottom, does Lamprecht, and he tries immediately for that single leg takedown sprawl by Drikas. Drikas looks like he's got a guillotine choke locked in. It's the arm end, very difficult to finish from that position, lets it go. Breathing heavy, Duplessis at the moment. Both guys visibly tired now, Sears. Both have been working incredibly hard for this first. After the first round. The first round was crazy. Wow. And a lot of grappling in the second round, that's also tiring. Got to be active here. The ref might just stand him up. And Vickers Ward gets them back standing. Let's see how long it takes Trickers to get back to his feet. Definitely tired. You can see he's breathing with his mouth wide Stand open. Up. Big punches landed by both. Wild swings by Lamprecht. Trickers might be in trouble here. Lamprecht has got his back. Lamprecht definitely looks, looks stronger the stronger of the two down. right now. Trickers has a hold of an arm. He's got the Kimura locked in. He's got the Kimura locked in. Can Lamprecht hold on? Lamprecht. Now he goes to the inverted armbar from that Kimura. And JC J J Lamprecht manages to stay out of trouble, but <laughs> Drikas Duplessis is in top position. A seesaw battle. Now Drikas on his back, he's got both of his hooks in. Less than 90 seconds remain in round number two of this middleweight bout. Drick is desperately trying, attacking the neck. Just flattened Lamprecht out again. Pops his arm out, he's got that in. That is not good for Lamprecht. He's got that in. Duplessis holds He's on. Definitely got that in. Lamprecht is holding on. Now it's locked up. That is surely it's going to be a matter of time. Squeezing for all his worth is Lamprecht is so Duplessis. tough. How is he still in this fight? See how heavy JC is or Drickus is breathing. Now he lets oh. it go. Wonder how much it took out of Lamprecht to try and survive there. That is phenomenal stuff. Trick is now passing, going into the full mount position. You can hear Monefis is screaming in the corner, just short elbows. Eight seconds remaining in this second round. Dirk, I can only imagine that it gets tougher and tougher to submit someone with sweat, tiredness. Absolutely, no doubt. You lose that strength in your arms, and it just becomes that much more difficult, especially when the guys are so sweaty and slippery. What a contest. What a contest. Drick has got up a lot heavier than JC after that round. Yeah, the, the corner. Want him to go fetch the monster. Want him to go fetch JC. <laughs> Gotta love it. Drick is breathing heavy. I think he should be up two rounds, but very, very close though. RDG specialists in differential gearbox repairs brings you the EFC girls. For the first time in their EFC Africa careers, both fighters enter the third round of a contest. Trikis Duplessis breathing heavy. Lamprecht looks slightly fresher. It's the final round in this middleweight bout. Duplessis is going to have to dig deep. You can see man is tired. Big hook landed. Comes in with that short elbow. 
JC stalking, landing shots, throwing just <laughs> wild punches now. Lamprecht wants to finish this. Big right hand by Lamprecht. One, two by Drickus. Now Lamprecht unloading. Oh, there goes the mouth guard. Drickus Duplessy is exhausted, and what a fight to open this card. Fight of the night. Oh, oh big end. Drickus is in trouble. Looks to be rocked now. Lamprecht drops down, tries to go for the leg. Did he slip? It was a big shot, but it looked like there was could possibly have been a slip. I'd like to see a replay of that. A duplicy ate a punch there. Drick is now on JC's back. Four minutes to go. Lamprecht manages to pop out. Now he's going to try from this position to possibly look and escape and then get onto Drickus's back. Drickus again jumps back onto Lamprecht's back, tries to get a hook in. Lamprecht survived once. Can he do it a second time? Flattened out is Lamprecht, but Drickus Duplessis is exhausted. It's been a monstrous effort from both fighters. Drickus again tries to attack that neck. Just see, there's no more power in those punches of Drickus. He's just swinging the arms. Not good for Lamprecht. Get He's got it in, yes. yes. Not good at all. Duplessis, can he finish? There it, it is! is. The submission! Drickus Duplessis, 3-0 oh at EFC Africa. The 19-year-old is setting the middleweight division alight. Both guys exhausted. Drickus Duplessis had to fight for that submission. And it was just one too many for Lamprecht. That was insane, Dirk. Insane. Crazy, crazy battle. We knew this had the potential to be the fight of the night. And so far, it certainly looks like it could be. Big smile on Drickus Duplessis' face. JC Lamprecht held on for a very long time with that choke. A monumental effort from both athletes tonight. The Action Replay is brought to you by One Plan, affordable health care for more South Africans. So the head kick that was early in the first round. Drick is throwing straight punches right down the middle. Big overhand right, can take a shot as well. JC landed a couple of those. Good counter right by Drickus. Looked like that was a slip and Drickus very nearly kicked the downed opponent. Pulled out of it in the last second, and this was that final submission. Got the rear naked choke in, and he held out for a long time to JC Lamprecht. Must have been milliseconds before actually going to sleep. What an incredible bout. Man, oh man, two warriors doing battle. Pushing themselves to the limit. There it is, the moment. Drika Stupnasi gets the W. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Vickers Swart has called a stop to this contest. One minute and 54 seconds into round number three. Declaring the winner by tap out due to a rear naked choke, Drikas still no. Duplessis! Ladies and gentlemen, this main card bout is three rounds in the AFC Africa middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a K-1 champion with a professional record of three wins and no losses. He stands 1.85 meters tall and weighed in at 84 kilograms. He's fighting out of Hatfield, Pretoria, Drickus still no. Duplessis! And now introducing his opponent. He's fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer holding a professional record of 20 wins and 12 losses. He stands 1.82 meters tall, weighing in at 83 kilograms. Fighting out of Bluff Durban, Donovan Bam Bams Hockey! And when the action begins, our referee in charge is Vickers Swart. 
Rex Diffin Gearbox brings you the beautiful EFC Hexagon Goals. Drink it, you ready? Go on, man. You ready? Let's go, guys. Start of this bout is brought to you by Pitbull Energy Drink. No aftertaste guaranteed. Two guys known for their stand-up fighting, and I really hope it stays standing because we're in for the fight of our lives. Drick is almost immediately going for the takedown. He's made his intentions very clear. Gets Donovan to the ground, and this is a part of his game that we haven't really seen all that much of. Keeping Drick those hips really low, trying to pass the guard. Seems like he's managed to do so successfully. He's trying to pop that leg out, and now he's going to look to mount. Hawkey just trying to find the cage, use the cage for support. Not a great spot for Hawkey to be in. I don't think a lot of people expect the Drickers to just close the gap so quickly. No ground and pound landed though. And then he's to set up for that half guard position. Posture up now, take his time, land his shots. See Hawkey desperately trying to get back to his feet. Hawkey needs to get that underhook. Manages to oh, slip out and get back to his feet, but almost immediately Drickers drives for that double. Gets it down, but Hawkey's got a hold of his neck. He does have a whole bunch of victories with that guillotine choke. It seems like Trickers has defended it for now, but he's not completely safe. Now he is, but still he's got a hold of it, leg. Happy to stay on the ground. Hawkey yeah. looks to take his back. Almost taking the back there. You see driving through. Inside, now looks to take the mount again. This time protecting his neck better than he did the previous time. Trickers has those long legs, just steps over to go into mount. Trying to drive Hawkey to the middle of the hexagon. Ah, he's got the side control. He needs to be careful. He's exposing his back. But so far, he's kept the control quite good as Trickers. He's working for Hawkey's arm. As you can see. See, that's a problem with grabbing around the neck. Good. Now Hawkey is going to take his back. He's working for an opportunity to really land some ground and pound. It looks, like he wants, looks like he wants to isolate an arm. Hawkey has enough experience now to know that he needs to calm down, work the arm slowly, and eventually opportunity will come. Again, to have to take down, but Hawkey's got a hold of his neck again. Yeah, down is Trickers. Trickers has done a lot of work here. Hopefully he has this gas tank to continue this pace. He's been the one doing all the aggressive coming forward and driving for those takedowns. Those are exhausting. But clearly a lot more comfortable on the ground. Bonovan Orkey also has a bunch of submission wins with an armbar, so comfortable off of his back. And almost immediately he sets up for it. Trick is now looking to pass, and now he's on Donovan's back. Donovan needs to defend the neck of his. If Trick is Trick to get is that, get that in. Us. Seems like Hawkey is out of trouble momentarily. And now Trick is going to work, try and slide that arm in further. Now he's going to turn it around. That's a bad spot for Hawkey, but managed to get out of it in the scramble. A lot of scrambling so far, Dirk. No dominant position settled just yet. He's shown a little bit from Donovan Hawkey. Now Trick is going to set up for the Kimura. Hawkey grabs the inside of his shorts, but should be able to power out of it and Hawkey does now he's got the top position another scramble looking for the sweep is Drickers but now Hawkey has got full mount now the Hawkey needs to settle in this position there's been enough scrambling and again now goes for the back it looks like that might be in Hawkey's got this locked up Drickers gives a thumbs up to the referee he's Seems fine tucked in at the moment but this is painful that's all you've got to do, you work to get on the back properly, get that arm underneath the chin. Trickers manages to power out of it, now Hawkey's going to try and set up for a triangle. Seems like he's escaped. Thumbs over the top, now he lands some ground and pounds, some big elbows by Trickers. He's getting them through the middle, Hawkey's going to have to do something oh, here. Hawkey's in big trouble, those Rick long having a close look, again and again and again, Trickers has landed. Cut. Big elbows by Trickers. Hawkey needs to escape from him, he needs to scramble, he needs to do Rick something. Rick has told him he has to work. 
Rick is now in full mount, 20 seconds to go. He's going to land four and more. Rick is right, having a very close look. This could be it for Donovan Hawkey. Drick is just to see landing again, again and again, and that and is it's it. Over. Drick is two plus C, four fight win streak at the age of 20 years. This guy has now shown himself up to the top ranks of the middleweight division. Well, he did show tonight that people are going to have to worry about more than just his stand up game. He did great on the ground in the scrambles. He had to work for it, though, to get that dominant position. The action replay G is brought to you by GNC Supplements. He just sort of got out here. He was in trouble momentarily, but managed to get out as soon as he had that top position. And that's from full guard that he was landing those elbows. Not something you see very often. And Hawkey covered up. He tried desperately to move and do something, but those shots were coming through one after the other. There's nothing he could do. He had no answer from there. It's just one of those things he didn't expect, Dirk. After the first shot, he's like, wow, that just happened. After another, another, and after four or five, I mean, you just get into survival mode. Lock your face up, hope for the best. And Vicar Swart gave him all the opportunity to try and improve his position, but he couldn't, and he had to jump in and stop the fight. Dominant performance showed by Drikas Duplessis, and tonight he showed that he's got a ground game as well. He certainly put his hand up in this middleweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Vicar Swart has called a stop to this contest. Four minutes and 50 seconds into round number one. Declaring the winner by TKO, Drickus Steel Knox Duplessis. Ladies and gentlemen, this main card bout is three rounds in the EFC middleweight division. Introducing first, Fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of four wins and one loss. He stands 1.85 meters tall, weighing in at 83 kilograms. Fighting out of Hatfield, Pretoria, Drickus Steel Knox Duplessis. And now introducing his opponent. He's fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and two losses. He stands 1.87 meters tall, weighing in at 83 kilograms. Fighting out of Sunning Hill, Johannesburg, Darren Double D Daniel. And when the action begins, our referee in charge is Bobby Karagianides. The lovely Hexagon Girls proudly brought to you by Rack Stiff and Gearbox, driven by perfection. Naomi and Michelle here tonight. All right, guys. Darren, you ready? Drink us, you ready? Fight! Start of this bout's presented by Pitbull, the world's only FDA-approved energy drink. Daniel in the blue, Duplessis in the white. And Duplessis someone that doesn't possess fear and doesn't feel that he's been respected by darren daniel and vice versa i think the same counts for darren daniel got two very good stand-up fighters then enough closes again trickers has got a hold of his neck though it's cranking is trickers duplessis duplessis holds on darren daniel though survives for the time being Darren is out of trouble momentarily. Triple C still holding on though. Still cranking as Drickus Triple C. Not letting go. Yeah. Uh, Daniel manages oh, to pop his head out. out. How much is that taken out of Triple C though? He was cranking, there's absolutely no doubt. That would have taken a lot out of him. There will be some nerves for both of these guys, but Triple C's had the title shot already, so he's used to the big lights. Daniel, been around the traps for a long time. Daniel just always looks so comfortable. Flows beautifully from kicks and punches and knees. Also looked so relaxed on the way out on his walk up. Oh, Big shot counter by Daniel. Pinpoint accuracy with his striking. Duplessis maybe needs just to compose himself a little bit here with the hype of fighting someone like Darren Daniel connects with the head kick on a big straight right now shoots for the takedown as Trickers 
Puts Darren down right in front of his own corner though. Daniel's gonna work back to his feet. Should be possible from this position. So strong as Duplessis. But Daniel. Vessels in the corner of Darren Daniel. And he's got his team behind him there. That's Daniel. What a start to this fight so far. Drickers is going to look to take Daniels back yet. Spins around though. Or in the clinch, Daniel very dangerous from this position, but Drickers also no slouch when it comes to using his Muay Thai. Using his knees effectively as Duplessis. Tries to drag Daniel so to the strong. deck. Doesn't fall well, there's Duplessis, but they're back to their feet. Daniel did grab the cage in that takedown and kept him to his feet and now he trips Duplessis and gets him down and Daniel locks up a guillotine, he might have this. Duplessis is in deep trouble here. Darren Daniel is cranking. Duplessis trying to break his hole. With all his might, Darren Daniel is pulling on the neck of Duplessis. Oh my goodness. Can Duplessis survive this? That's the big question. Daniel looking over to his corner for advice. Neil Casey, his jiu-jitsu coach is Screaming instructions over to him. Duplessis is out of trouble though. Wow. Now Daniel in the wow. half guard position. So tough as Duplessis. Very effective with ground and pound as Darren Daniel from half guard. Reminiscent of that JP Joubert fight. Now Duplessis tries to get back to his feet and does so successfully. Now it takes, takes Daniel down. Takes Daniel down. Manages to stop the takedown though. 90 seconds remaining of round one, it's flying by. Both of these guys have been going at it 100%. His gas tanks will be tested. There's absolutely no doubt. Right, the crowd have paid good money to see this fight, and so far it's delivering. You can see in the top position, he's got a minute left to work in this round. So far, very difficult round to score. How were those submission attempts from both guys? That was incredible. Daniel very calm off of his back. Looks like he wants to set up and grab that Kimura as Daniel. As Drickers drives forward. Looking to press down on that left leg so he can pass. Daniel wants that Kimura. Send. Duplessis got to be aware of that. Duplessis looking for the takedown again, and Daniel in the scramble though. Duplessis ends up on top. Duplessis. Looks like Daniel nearly reversed it. It's just Daniel up against Now Duplessis is going to take this back. Oh, this, this is not good against Darren Daniel. Daniel. It's a bad spot for Daniel to be in. This could be one of the biggest ups and he in gets the it. Trickers Duplessis defeats the legend of Darren Daniel at EFC 37. Yeah. What a moment that is for his career. He had his back. We saw that in the Gareth McLennan fight. Very similar situation. Talks in the gym is that he's been rolling and submitting McNeil and all his training partners. He's really put in a lot of effort for this fight. The young beats the new in this EFC middleweight division. Jinkas Duplessis puts his name up in lights after that loss to Gareth McLennan. Backs it up with a win. Over Darren Daniel. Incredible, incredible performance by Drickus Duplessis. Action replays brought to you by GNC. Peak performance down to sides. Was in the scramble. Drickus managed to get the back. And that was in deep. Flattened him out immediately. And Craig Foley was work. Daniel had to hold on for another 13 seconds or so. But that was in and nowhere to go. Drickus Duplessis certainly elated with his performance tonight. Could possibly be the biggest victory of his career to date, Dirk. Certainly, certainly is. Warno Fisser, very, very proud of the young student. Trickus Duplessis gets the W. Sees off Darren Daniel. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Bobby Caragianides has called a stop to this contest. Four minutes and 50 seconds into round number one. Declaring the winner by tap out due to a rear naked choke, Drickus still nods. Do bless him.
incredibly talented guy and things got really heated yesterday it's actually been quite heated for the build-up for this entire fight both on social media not letting up these guys really do not like each other ladies and gentlemen efc 40 live from carnival city in johannesburg south africa this is the main event of the evening proudly brought to you by keto bet exchange the ultimate sports betting bookmaker in association with ag mobile gnc supplements bear claw energy drink rdg rex diffin gearbox and carnival city and now to those in attendance and to the millions of efc fans around the world let the battle begin! Five rounds in the EFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and one loss. He stands 1.85 meters tall, weighing in at 77 kilograms. Fighting out of Hatfield, Pretoria, Drinkus still knocks Duplessis. And now introducing his opponent. He's fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a pro record of 12 wins and four losses. He stands 1.87 meters tall, weighing in at 76 kilograms. Fighting out of Sunning Hill, Johannesburg. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the former EFC welterweight champion, Dino the Lion Bagatti. And when the action begins, our referee in charge is Vickers Swart. RDG, specialist in differential gearbox repairs, brings you the EFC Hexagon Girls. That's Jordan getting a crack in here for our main event. Welterweight action. It is Trickus Duplessy. Taking on Dino Bagatine. A matchup for the ages. And these boys are ready to deliver. You have guys, just to remind you, it's five rounds, eh? A minute to listen to my call, we'll be finished with it all time. Touch gloves, get your corners. Christmas, are you ready? You know, are you ready? That's five. And here we go, round one underway in the all blue. In his bagatine in the blue and white. Duplessis unleashed the power of the bear with bear claw energy, bringing you round number one. The tension in this arena is just absolutely manic. Well, the crowd's on their feet. I mean, they've had three amazing fights in a row, so they have to deliver here, and I think we both know that they will. Dino already looking a lot busier than we've seen him in his past fights in terms of mixing things up and throwing some kicks into there as well. Nice kick to the body by Duplessis backing up Bagatine, who is extremely aggressive here in the opening seconds. Both guys have incredible power, both swinging for the fences. Bagatine looking to land. Drick is Duplessis landing a knee in the clinch. How many crazy fights have we seen tonight, Cyrus? And certainly this is, even though it's only been going on for a minute, another manic one itself. What a story tell when it would be for him to win after winning Good an EFC 1 kick. to win an EFC 40. Fairy tale story for him, but he's got a lot of work to do. Oh, he caught, he caught Drickers with that one right hand. Caught him again, but now Drickers closing in the gap, trying to get in for that takedown. He gets a hold of that leg, looking for a single leg and looking to get Bagatine to the ground. But almost immediately, Bagatine's got that underhook locked in. Looks like Drickers is going to let go of that takedown attempt. Bagatine now wants to spin him around and put him against the fence. Wow, frantic stuff early on. Both men looking very, very focused in this fight. Both men want this victory. Good left, solid left by Drickers. But we know Bagatine can take a shot. Oh, we've seen it many, many times. And that striking game of Bagatine is really like no other. Very impressive. Drickus is swinging wild. Mixing the elbows in as well, throwing that forward elbow. 
That's the one big thing that Drick is, especially younger in his career where he struggled a little bit as he, he actually got so overexcited inside the hexagon, he forgot to regulate his breathing. And in a fight with this much anticipation and this much adrenaline, it must be coursing through both of these guys, could be right back there again. He's one of those fighters that he really keeps you guessing. You don't know where he's going to hit you and where he's going to hit you from. Very unorthodox striking from Trickus Duplessis, and that could be dangerous. Frantic. Yeah, just controlling the center of the hexagon right now. Just frantic stuff with two minutes, ten seconds remaining. Well, the crowd's loving it here in Johannesburg at the Big Top Arena. What a night we've had, Cyrus Fees. What's that? What a night we've had. Oh, I mean, it just... And the noise inside this place is just crazy at the moment. If any event you're going to do it, your 40th event has to be one of the ones that you impress on. And uh, these fighters have put every bit of effort into it, even at the prelims. Nice knee coming out of the clinch there by Trickus Duplessis. A very lethal knee. Oh, he hits oh, the Oh, Dino's chip. in trouble here. Duplessis going to look to finish. He's got Dino hurt. Looks for the takedown. He's grabbing all over the cage. Dino is. Dino's in big trouble. Duplessis looking to finish. Lands some big shots. Now Dino fires off a punch of his own. Good left again by Duplessis. You know what that's called, grabbing that cage? That's called being a veteran. And what he did, he didn't get penalized for it, but it saved him and allowed him to recover. I like how Duplessis is finishing those combinations as soon as Dino tries to duck underneath the punches. Getting a knee right on the chin. Dino Bagatine pushing forward. Looks like he has recovered now, but sure, that was desperately close. Duplessis landing Duplessis. some shots, and now Bagatine landing some shots. Everything to fight for. That left hook is really working for Drickus at the moment. Yeah, he can't that seem to contest it back at team. And now Drickus looks for the takedown and he gets it successfully. Nice little shot there by Drickus Duplessis. He timed it right. Hasn't quite got him on his back as he looks to finish it. See Norman Vessels in his corner is telling him to get back to his feet and he's going to do so successfully. Hip throws wow. Drickus as he tried to get his back. Beautiful throw by Dino Drickus, Bagatine. Drickus can still get his back from this position, though. But there's not enough time that will remain for him to work. Seconds remaining. Final seconds here. Final moments of round number one. Wow. <laughs> this is a five-round fight. But these guys are given every bit of it. You know how everybody turns it up in the last 10 seconds. That was the whole round. They were turning it up. To From that beginning to finish, something worthwhile noting is during the build-up of this fight, Dino actually apologized to mixed martial arts fans around the world for what happened in Cape Town between Gideon Drotsky and Tamila Maputa. And he said, the two of them are going to come out here tonight and show you exactly what the sport is actually about. And my goodness me, it has delivered so far. Oh, so, yeah. Most definitely a tremendous round. In, in a night of amazing rounds that we've seen here. Let's take a look at our GNC corner cam as we're in the corner of Dino Bagatine and FFF. Now to drink his tooth C. Team CIT as he gets his instructions. If he fights smart and listens to his trainers, drink his tooth C. The sky's the limit. He has that much natural talent. He's getting better before our eyes. Make no mistake, so is Dino Bagatin. He is just firing on all cylinders tonight. We all knew as soon as he had a solid wrestling and jiu-jitsu game, he was going to be a problem, which he has shown to be tonight. Round number two. Good solid leg kick by Bagatin. That's something that's been missing from his game with a lot of boxing that he spent his last couple of years working on. Unleash your inner grizzly, guys. Bear Claw Energy Drink, round number two. Uh oh! Trickus might get in trouble. He ran into a nice hook by Bagatine. Straight right by Bagatine. That short little left hook from Drickus has really been working so far tonight. And you can almost see he's limping a little bit on that yeah. leg, so he's already paid dividends with the leg kick, says Bagatine. It's definitely he's slowed down. For the takedown stuff, the sprawl from Great. Bagatine. That is relentless strength. 
and explosive talent right there. That is, that's what a 21-year-old does, my friend, if you can just keep going at it. Bagatin is going to manage to reverse that. He's going to look to take Drickus down. Drickus has got a hold of his neck. He's going to have to watch, watch out to stick his neck out. Yes, as I beat Darren Daniel. Let's go over now. A great technical fighter here. I mean, and now Bagatina's has got Drickus's back. What can he do? Is he going to go to the striking game or is he going to try to sub? Now, Plessis is trying to reverse him, but Bagatina's still got his back. He's got a hold of the arm. Drickus is going to be able to slip loose, transitioning and scrambling. Absolute madness. He couldn't follow through with that armbar attempt, and now he is on his back again, going for the arm. The very strong Duplessis on top of the situation and great reversal skills. He looked like a veteran out there with that one. He's looking for the Kimura was was Bagatine for a moment there on the on the outside of Drickus. Drickus taking a couple of big deep breaths. They're gonna happy stand to, him up, big happy to get back standing, and you're gonna hear the crowd yeah, in appreciation. And here we go. Bagatine and Duplessis back to their feet. This has been an absolute clinic. It's been completely exciting. Two true warriors from different generations. Good nice use shot. of the shot to the body, I like that. Big shot by Duplessis though. A little wild, a little unorthodox, that's what makes him special. It's a good though. shot by, it looks like Bagatine has hurt Drickus here. Now Drickus shoots for that takedown. It looked like a good sprawl by Bagatine. You know, he's using that. He always has that in his back pocket. He is said, that takedown attempt. He can get it just about every time. But great reversal there as he tries to come out on top. Dino Bagatine using every bit of his energy. But he's still on still his back. Still trying to reverse Drickus. And now finally Drickus in the full mount. Oh, in, the, in the full guard, my apologies. Looking for that for the onboard now is Dino Bagatine. Beautiful. He's... He, very, very nearly had this in the scramble. He looks to get Drickus from this position. Very, very sneaky by Dino Bagatine. And he's got that, those skinny long limbs that are great for arm bombs and triangles. Now Drickus is going to take Dino's back. Dino shakes him off, but Drickus is still on top of it. He's got the one hook in. He's going to lock a body triangle in. This will restrict the movement for Bagatine. He's going to have to try and turn towards the side where the ankle is locked in. He's left side to put Watch pressure. Out right here, but he's got this in, it seems. Anything he does, and anything he does. Drickus Duplessis You gets. can't stop this young man. You can't stop him when he grabs a hold of you. He has so much strength, sir. So much strength, and he is on his way to a title shot. It may not be announced right now, but it may be announced very soon, because that kid is ready for a belt around his waist. How stacked is this welterweight division? So much talent, top to bottom. And Drickus Duplessis had to work for it tonight. There's no doubt in my mind this is the toughest fight that he's been in. My goodness. He, he showed us a lot. He really did. He went through the storm. First he takes out Darren Daniel. And now a win over Dino Bagatine. Wow, his resume is getting pretty impressive right now. Incredible. Just absolutely incredible. Top to bottom, this card has been sensational. GNC action replay, peak performance down to a science. As you see some of the great highlights from this round, we thought this one may have the potential to go five rounds. The armbar attempt from Bagatine. This is where being a 21-year-old with the superhuman strength comes into play. He can scramble out of just about anything. He, it's really amazing. He certainly can rely on brute strength. Both these guys are technically sound on the ground, but if you have that additional strength that Duplessis certainly has, you get a little tick and you get the scales to tip over in your advantage. Take nothing away from Dino Bagatine. He was a warrior out there tonight. A great finish. A big night for FFM. They've had a great, uh, excuse me, big night for CIT here because Trickus Duplessis is on top right now here at EFC 40, a milestone event, a milestone victory for that young man. Let's go to Shane. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Referee Vickis Swart has called a stop to this contest. Three minutes and 33 seconds into round number two. Declaring the winner by tap out due to a rear naked choke, Drickus Still Knox Duplessis. Let's send it up to Shane the Duke Wellington to get a cracking. Ladies and gentlemen, this EFC catchweight bout is scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a pro record of two wins and four losses. He stands 1.78 meters tall, weighing in at 79 kilograms. Fighting out of Claremont, Cape Town, Bruno Major Mukulu. And now introducing his opponent, he's fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and one loss. He stands 1.85 meters tall, weighing in at 79 kilograms. Fighting out of Hatfield, Pretoria, Drickus Steel Knox Duplessis. And when the action begins, our referee in charge is Bobby Karajanides. Still Knox, trick is duplicy. Taking on the major stepping up focus, Bruno Makulu. Oh, Vickers, are you ready? Bruno, are you ready? Fight! Bobby Karajanides gets us started in round number one, brought to you by our partner at Bear Claw Energy. Do you check out them on Facebook to win? Watch for the explosive striking of Duplessis. Say this about Makulu, guy is not shaded by striking. He'll stand in there and bang all day long. I think ground game is going to be any sort of takedown. I think that's what it's going to be for Makulu. He doesn't want to go to the ground. He loves to stand and trade, and I, I don't think I've ever seen Makulu being knocked down. So he certainly takes a good punch, and he's got very heavy hands himself as well. Well, we remember from the Joe Cummins fight that he... Big shot landed on Duplessis there it is. In, in the pocket. That's what we saw in the Joe Cummins fight. Right on the button a couple of times, Makulu did. And I think Stillnox has to be very weary of that. And you know, Orne Visser obviously has been watching tape. Drickus has been watching tape, and they're preparing for it. Absolutely. He certainly has matured as a fighter, has Drickus Duplessis. If I'm not mistaken, he made his debut at 19 years old very young and raw and now he's already a veteran inside the hexagon seven outings 21 years of age doesn't overcommit he doesn't come in so aggressive anymore great outside leg kick by Makulu wow aggressive 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 from Duplessis kind of throwing caution to the wind I'll tell you what he reminds me of and this is a very high comparison it is to John Jones where he's just so much raw ability. He kind of has that different type of striking and, and just an absolute animal in there. It's very unorthodox. He likes to mix up strange things that he don't normally look out for. And I think a lot of that is Leon Maynard written all over it, sparring with him every single day. The stuff they do in training, well, the things they try at least in training in terms of the striking game is not stuff guys can easily pull off in fights. Makulu, great, is on song with the counter punching at the moment. He's caught Duplessis a couple of times when he's Big rushed right in. Jumps off the fence, Superman punch lands, but Makulu is landing in the pocket yeah. every time. Duplessis is going to have to keep his hands up and be weary. There's a lot of power coming from Bruno Makulu, and every time he gets in the pocket, he takes one on the chin. The counter punching is really on for Bruno Makulu. He can take a shot and he can dish it right back out. Are we going to see that chin tested by Duplessis? Tough as nails is Bruno Makulu. We've seen it in every single one of his fights. He should have went through with that when he held back. And he could have had a nice right hand. Yeah, his coaches were screaming at him, but just aiming for with the right and not actually following through with it. Crowd now getting behind Drickers. Backing him and into the fence, and here we take go. Down. Big sprawl by the Major. Good underhook, good control, and he actually puts Beautiful. Drickus on his back. Sensational stuff. What a reversal. Bruno Makulu. This is his moment. Can he oh, he's capitalize? He's looking for the guillotine. It's an Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Now, Drickus will just pop out from here. He's inside control already. Sloppy guillotine attempt. 
Horrible idea from McCooley. Should have backed up and kept the thing standing. Uh, possibly over eager. He didn't expect to be in such a good position. And Aldrich says to Gia is get his left arm over the face of McCooley. Private pressure. He's going to pop his head out. And then he's going to be inside control with McCooley pressed up against the fence. McCooley is just desperately holding on to that neck. He's not going to submit him from there. Drick is happy to even change position and go into half guard. The so question is, when he pops out, is he going to be able to do enough? We know he has that power. He wants to use his instep now to get his leg loose again and possibly move over into side control. And Mukulu is squeezing for all his worth. He's going to blow out his arms here if he's not careful. Drick is certainly in no trouble to actually tap out here. He's no, landing a couple of punches. If I was Mukulu, I'd let go of it now and start working on the next. I don't think he wants to let go. He doesn't want to let him pop out at all is where it's at right now. He doesn't want to even feel the ground and pound right now. He possibly just wants to get this thing back to the feet. Bobby Kerjanides is having a close look. If it stays in his position, he will stand him back up. Kerjanides is a guy that does respect the ground game, Absolutely. though. And Absolutely. If, if he's trying to advance at all, it's going to be hard to get a stand-up. Each referee with their own attributes, with their own tendencies. Just about 20 seconds left here, and what an interesting round number one that we've had. Well, as much as Mukulu is, is, is blowing out his arms here, which he is doing, he's doing incredibly well that he hasn't taken any punishment from this position. He's actually squeezing at an attempt here. He's managed to finally clasp his hands together, but I don't think Drickus is in trouble yet. No, not at all. It just was not good positioning. And it really could have been a different fight had he not gone for that guillotine. Just a little too sloppy for a guy with the raw power and athletic ability that Drickus has. Good aggression shown by McCrudy every time in the pocket. And how nicely timed was that Superman punch off of the cage. But really, this was super impressive. You can see he's put some time in on the mat as Bruno McCrudy wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. So much of the game is dictated by guys that are strong wrestlers. Question is, is he going to get any sort of points for attempting at the guillotine, especially at the end, because he was trying to get the tap. As you see the corner, Monet Visser and Drinkus Duplessis. That's the GNC corner camp. And we know we know how judges like to look at it. If you're in the top position, you are the one winning the fight. So even though he had his head trapped, the, the submission, in my opinion, was never really on. And, and you know, our judges are very, very well educated. They will know it was just an attempt to hold on. It wasn't an actual submission attempt. As we see the, the former middleweight champion, the pitbull Jeremy Smith, in the corner of Drickus Duplessis to Jeremy Smith's side. And here we go. Bruno Makulu, Drickus Duplessis. This one's already lived up to more than what people expected out of this fight. Now Makulu is just charging down on Duplessis and he's throwing some big punches. Round Completely two, different two. coming into the second round than you saw in the first. Makulu yeah, now bringing the fight to Duplessis. And Duplessis is breathing quite heavy already. You got to believe that a guy like Duplessis did not overlook Bruno Makulu. Oh, Makulu is just on point right now. Absolutely. The guys in the CIT camp, they are professionals. They take every single fight very, very seriously. A very rough camp. You talk about the sparring sessions. I've heard stories that they get quite intense over at CIT. I'm going to remind you of the old Valley Tudor days with Vandalay Silva back in Brazil. <laughs> Spa very, very hard and very often at CIT. He's feeling the effects of the power of Bruno Makulu. Yeah, Makulu Absolutely. Makulu is stalking him at the moment. Big leg kick by Big shot. C, but Makulu chases him down. It's almost as if Makulu now believes that he can get the victory here coming into the second round. And these are not looping punches. These are right down the middle. Big combinations. Watch out for Bruno Makulu. The major is on fire. Drickus Duplessis is breathing very, very heavy. Bruno Makulu is looking impressive tonight, Cyrus. Absolutely. Now, shoots for the takedown as Duplessis is going to finish this one. Very nice takedown. Textbook turning the head in there and getting the takedown by Drickus Duplessis. This is where he needs to play his game. And he wants to push Makulu up against the fence here. Makulu is trying to get back to his feet. He gets the rear knife. Oh, shades of the first fight. Shades of the first fight, Dirk. 
But McCooley manages to get the foot off as he tried to get his hooks and in. Here comes the guillotine. He's going to set up the guillotine now. Is he is so strong? Is Drickus Duplessis now? McCooley is going to look for the takedown. What a takedown by Bruno McCooley! That's how you can counter the guillotine. McCooley is in charge right now. Duplessis is in deep water at the moment. I don't think we've seen him in deep water like this before. Gets this back to his is feet. a fight. Fights for the takedown Ooh. again. The trick is Duplessis. Makulu tries to get back to his feet now. Drickus is going to super him and puts him back down. Crowd loves it. He's going to look for to get one hook in. He's got one hook in now. How long can he fight it off? Two minutes to work. Drickus Duplessis breathing heavy. He's got the body triangle locked up. It's a matter of time, but you can see he is exhausted. He gets it. He, he gets it. it. That should be it. That's going to be it. Drickus Duplessis. Wow. 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 He weathered the storm, Dirk. Make no mistake, he was in trouble during that fight. He was in trouble. But that, that killer instinct, a split second that took him, takes the opportunity that presented to him, and he finishes immediately. Drink is duplicity, showing how durable he is, how resilient he is. He was taking some heavy, heavy shots. And I know that Warren Fisher can't be happy about that, but he stuck to the game plan, he got his takedown, and he did what he had to do. He was relentless for that rear naked choke. Absolutely. Bruno McCulloch can hold his head high, though. He was Absolutely. in this fight from the very first second. I'd say he, they're both in for a little bit of a bonus at the end of the night, barring. No doubt about we that. still have two to go, but here you go. Let's take a look at the replay, our TNT action replay. Just had enough oh. time. Grab the back of his arm just to unsettle him a little bit to set it up. And you can see a smile of relief and a smile of happiness on the face of Drickus Duplessis as he got that choke in. A TNT action replay. What a fight. Incredible. Bruno Makulu has to be happy with the performance. I thought it was a loss. Let's send it up to Shane the Duke Wellington to make it all official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Bobby Karagianides has called a stop to this contest. Two minutes and 50 seconds into round number two. Declaring the winner by tap out due to a rear naked choke. Drickus still knocks Duplessis. Ladies and gentlemen, EFC 56 live from Carnival City in Johannesburg, South Africa. This is the main event of the evening. Proudly brought to you by Superbets for sports betting anywhere, anytime, and in partnership with Adidas. RDG Rex Devin Gearbox, Super Crush, Seven Stars Energy Drink, Constantia Insurance, Aqua Vita Mineral Water, and Carnival City. And now, to those in attendance, and to the millions of EFC fans around the world, let the battle begin! Three rounds in the EFC Mineral Weight Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a pro record of seven wins and two losses. He stands 1.85 meters tall, weighing in at 83 kilograms. Fighting out of Biala, Poland, Rafał, the Polish tank, Harati. And now introducing his opponent. He's fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a pro record of eight wins and one loss. He stands 1.85 meters tall, weighing in at 84 kilograms. Fighting out of Pretoria, South Africa, ladies and gentlemen, the reigning EFC welterweight champion, Drinkus Still not. Bobby 
And here's the Rex Civic Gearbox. Hexagon Girls now with a branch open at Polokwane, serving customers in and around the Limpopo province. That is Pumza. And it is that time, folks. Main event, three five-minute rounds. There's Drickus, still knocks Duplessy. The Polish tank, Rafal Heretic. Bobby Karajanidis brings the fighters to the center. Round number one is underway, folks. Main event time. Round one brought to you by Seven Stars, and he's already winding up that right hand. Rafal Heretic has serious power. It's Trickus Duplessis in the bright green and the red and white. It's Rafal Heretic, chasing and here him. comes the power. He's chasing Trickus down here, and he's landing very accurately with his strikes. It's Rafal Heretic Ooh. early on. Awkward spot there. He got spun around, and Rafal. You know, I think the key to this fight, I think, is the stand-up for Rafal Heretic. I think, I think that power is really tough to deal with. If you allow Drinkus Duplessis to really get going and get a rhythm, he's oh, very, very difficult to do. You cannot let him settle into a rhythm. That's the main thing. Try and disrupt it. Try and stay as busy as possible. Don't let him take the time to get focused, to get his timing, to get his distance. Of course, Rafal Heretic, a family man, a firefighter back in Poland when he's not fighting. This guy is the ultimate macho man, right? Drinkus Duplessis fully committed. Oh, chasing him down there. Oh, and he's throwing big shots here, Doug, a little bit of everything, but Drickus fires right back. Not scared to get in the pocket and trade as Drickus Dupas, he looks for the flying knee. What a tussle here between these two. Pace is frantic early on. You know, Drickus Dupas, he at weigh-in yesterday was even getting into it with Yannick Fahadi. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> big shot by... Turn, you know, I talked to Rafal Heretic and he said, Listen, if I can get this one over Drake, I'm going after the welterweight belt. That makes things even more interesting at yeah, 77 absolutely. kilos. Rafal is landing hard. Every time he closes the distance, he comes in close enough, lands a couple of big hooks to the body. Drake is duplicy. He's working very hard on that inside leg kick that's given him a little bit of success so far. Of course, this is nothing too foreign, though. Drake is super C. He is in absolute battles every day at CIT with some hard, hard punches. Yeah, absolutely. The Philharitic just so tough and so gritty. Big flying knee nearly oh. connected. And he's gonna try to pull guard, and here comes Rafal Heretic walking right through him. The Polish zombie will call him tonight. Oh, big swing in this. Turns him around. Hits him with the uppercut. Drickus is in a bit of trouble here. Rafael Heretic is asking all sorts of questions. Drickus Duplessis being tested. Yeah, he's getting tagged at every corner as Drickus Duplessis. Also starting to breathe heavy as Drickus. We've seen an absolute skyrocketing of Drickus Duplessis in the last year. But people forget how good Rafael Heretic really is. And big shots here, big knees. Rafael Heretic is looking to finish here. He's landing some big shots. Every single time he gets into the pocket, he lands three or four clean shots. And then Drickus basically has to punch him away or kick him away. This is what we would call a barn burner or a, a slobber knocker back in the States. These two are throwing everything at each other. Rafal Heretic been a little bit more effective here at landing the big power shots. Yeah, he certainly landed the hardest shots. Trickus now lands a nice straight right well, to his own. He back hard though. Trickus Duplessis hasn't lost anything on his punches and kicks. He just hasn't landed anything real flush yet. Ooh, beautiful combination there by Trickus Duplessis. Rafal Heretic has tasted loss. Big hand kick by Trickus Duplessis. That one found its mark. And he goes with the inside leg kick. He's getting the rhythm, Dirk. Absolutely. A little bit concerning if Drickus had a look up at the clock. Walking right through. Here comes the big knees. The uppercut. Rafal Heretic. Drickus says, bring it on. Yeah, I don't know about that. Rafal is landing hard and strong with a lot of bad intent. 
Rodriguez looks for the takedown easily. He's having nothing of it there. And quickly easily stuffed. Yeah, easily stuffed by Rafael Heretic. And it looked like he was going for a guillotine. The trick is just pulled out of it. Oh, and he ate a big knee there. Rafael Heretic. In my short time here in the UFC, I've never seen anybody tested like this. What a fight early on. Still plenty to go. Now Drickers lands a couple of good shots. Rafael is trying to unload every single time he gets into the clinch. Good and he take takes down. it down easily. Straight third. into side control is Rafael Heretic. He won't be able to finish. Not no. enough time left. And look at that sprawl game of Rafael Heretic. He is in complete control, Dirk. That was a dominant wow. round by Rafael Heretic. Not quite a 10 8, but that was a strong, strong round by the Polish fighter. Yeah, Drick is certainly not out of it. He landed a couple of shots of his own, but every single time Rafael Heretic closes the distance, he gets into the pocket, he lands three or four big body shots, lands one or two big shots up top as well. You know, and I, I don't want to, I feel like I may have, I don't want to insult Martin Mastodon, who had a war with Drick as far as testing him. That being said, stand up wise, nobody's just beat up on him like Rafael Heretic did in round number one. Not that amount of unanswered shots, and exactly just the accuracy that he has as well. And it, it's so deceiving because when you look at him, he's not this shredded guy with veins running everywhere, but he's got so much power. And that's just the grind that we constantly talk about. And it's the accuracy that Polish he punches tank. with. Polish tank. Not the Polish buggy. Not the Polish sedan. Doesn't the have Polish to look pretty. tank. <laughs> Doesn't have to look pretty to be effective. And my goodness, is he effective. Wow, that was a, that was a really eye-opening round number one. And, and the fans here in Carnival City in the big top, I think, are a little surprised. Nobody really saw that coming. They didn't think it would be quite so dominant for Heretic. Patrickus looks focused, ready to go. And it's round number two. Remember, this is a three-round affair, folks. Round two brought to you by Seven Stars Energy Drink. The party starts when the stars are out. High-powered, Garana-based energy drink, Seven Stars. Oh, and then with that uppercut, that uppercut is really lethal. Both guys are throwing big. Someone's going to oh, go down. Big shot, that left hook landed on the money. And he oh, okay, here it comes. Right. And there's another one. This is Rocky. Rick is trying desperately for the flying knee. He rocked Heretic with a big left hand, but looks like he's recovered. He manages to get him down to the deck. But quickly recovering wow, is Rafael Heretic. Wow, You're right. Wow. They were trading devastating blows. Rafael Heretic hit a disgusting hook shot. And then it was Drickus Duplessis answering with an even harder shot. That just goes to show you the power of Drickus. And remember, Rafael Heretic has been knocked out a few times, folks. Now showing do, a little bit of wear and tear as Rafael Heretic. But also do the world of good for the confidence of Jimmy's Duplessis. He's, he's keeping those hands down, too. Look how far those hands are down around his waist. He's also breathing heavy now as Rafael Heretic. He's got a long ways to go. We're only about a minute and a half into round number two. He's going to have to recover. The trick is certainly hurt him badly with that shot, and he's still not Trick quite. isn't moving very gingerly either. No, no, no. Both of these guys have <laughs> taken some along. big shots, and both of them will need to dig deep here. I feel like they just want to say, okay, guys, time out. Nice so we just get a rest for a second. And now looking for the oh, takedown. Stuffed almost immediately, but he gets him down. Can he keep him down? The strength of Duplessis, we talked about it before. He's very hard to deal with on the ground. Heretic's going to get back to his feet yet. Duplessis is going to have to watch Possibly. out for the guillotine. And he does. Oh, and he's underneath his neck. Yeah, he yeah, has got this locked up. Duplessis is going to have to fight out of this. And he is wrenching on the neck, but how tight is it, Dirk? Wrenching oh. on the neck of Trickus Duplessis is Rafal Heretic, the Polish tank. How tight is it? His hands are His hands aren't quite lost together. Now they are. Oh, now he now. lets it go. I don't think he's quite got this because he's oh, he's still yanking on it though. Still I don't know pulling. how tight it is. If he can crank it and turn that elbow up. Constantly reversing his hands or resetting his hands as Rafael Heretic, but he's squeezing on the neck. And this, this could be dead. Now Drickus looks for the takedown again, Rafael Heretic. With a beautiful sprawl there, not allowing the takedown. Oh, he's going for the anaconda, anaconda, but he can't clap. Jacobs gets out of the hospital. Oh, 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 Jacobs took the seat. He's going to get him. Oh, and he I think he's out. I think he's out of trouble. I think he's out of trouble. My goodness me. But now oh, he can look. Look, looking for 
the adverse that you're trying to war with. Trick is to see. Can he put him down and work a ground and pound assault? Now he does. Elbows to the face. Again and again, the crowd have oh lost their goodness. mind. That was lightning quick. He's got plenty wow. of that 2 4 fuel in his tank still. Drickus Duplessis. Drive going well. Drickus is digging deep. A minute 38 remains in the second round. Oh, He's got time to work. Yeah. The Rafal Heretic is going to get back to his feet. Now Drickus locks it up again. Oh my God, Drickus Duplessis is an absolute beast. He's got it. He He's gets the victory. Drickus Duplessis. Wow. Take the bow, young man. That was a classic trick of Duplessis. You are the man tonight. This is your oh, year. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Gorgeous victory by trick of Duplessis. What can you say? That kid is an absolute beast. That animal. man absolute is an animal. animal. Wow, just when you think he's shocked, just when you think he's tired, that explosion. Reversal in seconds, in milliseconds. Telling Locks you. it up. Incredible. I think the, the thing that changed the fight is that one big shot that he landed oh. in the second round, it swung the momentum in his favor, and from there he just had a lot of work to do. Rafael Heretic was not going away for any money. Landing what? some big shots, trick is to see, but Rafael Heretic again reversed. Is. There it is, locks it up, cinches it in. That is so deep and so tight. Look at him, just wrenching, gets the victory. A relieved man is Rafael Heretic falling <laughs> on top of him. Wow, we had to fight tonight. That was a heck of a fight, and it reminds me so much of the Vensadin fight, the scrambles that he had, and somehow Drinkus would continue to come out on top, and that's exactly what happened in this fight. I had a feeling if it went to the ground, the power of the technique was going to go the way of Drinkus Tupasi, and it did. Absolutely incredible. You can't say enough about this performance tonight. He's a talent. And he was pushed. He was pushed into a deep, dark place by Rafael Heretic. He took a bunch of very hard shots. He still has work to do in his career. That He's kid still right now so young, though. is so already young. an international star. 100 percent You better put his name in lights. Let's send it up to Shane the Duke Wellington for our official decision. Ladies and gentlemen. Referee Bobby Caragianides has called a stop to this contest. Three minutes and 34 seconds. It's a round number two, declaring the winner by tap out due to a guillotine. Drickus still knocks. Duplessis. Sad. He's not eating those cookies, is he? That is, that is Mrs. Cooks from no, every day. He, no, he will be soon. <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> Both guys looking really, really focused. It's time for your main event of EFC 59. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the city of gold, Johannesburg, South Africa, the time for talk is over. It's time to knuckle up and throw down. Five rounds for the EFC welterweight championship of the world. Introducing first, he is the challenger. A mixed martial artist with a record of seven wins and three defeats. He stands 1.82 meters tall with a weight of 76 kilos. Fighting out of Rio Grande de Norte, Brazil, Jose Dino da Rocha. And now, his opponent standing across the hexagon of fighting out of the blue corner. He is a mixed martial artist with an incredible record of nine wins and only one defeat. He stands 1.85 meters tall, weighing in at 76 kilos. Fighting out of Pretoria, South Africa, he is the reigning, defending, undefeated, undisputed EFC welterweight champion of the world, Drinkus Still not. And your referee when the action begins, pick a swerve. The lovely Hexcon girls probably brought to you by Rexton and Gearbox, driven by perfection. Pumza and Giselle here tonight at Carnival City. It's Drickus Duplessis, the EFC welterweight champion of the world. Taking on Jose de Hosha. 
Pick a swap with last minute instructions for this five round championship Jose, you ready? Tickets, are you ready? Let's fight. And here we go. Round number one brought to you by Fed Exchange, excuse me, Seven Stars Energy Drink. And it is Jose De Hosha in the black and red. In the white, your champion, Drink a Super Suit. The approach is going to be interesting. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Now Russia comes out firing. Sometimes they say, you know, the drinkers, he needs to get hit. Yeah. He needs to have someone force the pace for him to kick on. In nearly every one of his fights, it seems like he does get a really s staggering blow that just kind of opens him up and wakes him up, and then he seems to take over. Yeah, 100%. You, you've seen all his previous fights, you know. First round, hardly he wins those rounds, but he comes back strong, eh? He, he's a resilient, resilient fighter. Tavos attempted that hip throw. This is where Drickus is so strong, he's in the clinch. He just has that inherited strength, working on a farm his whole life. It just seems like something else, something you really can't train. Yeah, very, very strong athlete. Listen, I come from farm country in Iowa. I know how these farm boys are. I wasn't one of them, obviously. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't tell that. <laughs> but Duke see genetically is just, uh, he's a fine specimen of a fighter, isn't he? Absolutely. And there you go, the wrestling oh, match wow. here. Nahosha managed to get Drikas to the ground. Oh, Drikas taking his back. Trying to oh, come nice. out the back. Oh, hitting the back oh, quickly. Wow. Nice transition. Just shows his jiu-jitsu game is on another level. He's a black belt. He, he never stays in one spot, yeah. Drikas. We saw that in the Martin Van oh, wow. Beautiful take down. This shows how strong Drikas is. Drikas nine side mounts. Got the Hosh against the cage. That's where he's very strong with that guillotine. And he's going to get underneath that chin and try to tap out a very capable grappler into Hosha. He has never been submitted in his professional career. Now Hosha has to really watch out for that position. Drick is very, very strong there. Seven submission victories for Drick is to proceed. Piling him up up against the fence right now is Drickus. It looks like he's looking for that guillotine. Oh, it looks like he deep. might get it. He's gonna tap him, boys. Yeah. Is it tapping or not? It's, it's hard to tell. Yeah, it looked, yeah, it looked, it's almost. yeah, it looked like he was tapping. But that's deep, eh? There's no way. Oh wow. How tough is the Hosha? And it seems no like right now. it looked like he, he tapped. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, did, yeah. Swart watched very yeah. closely, and I don't think he went out, well, but I oh, think that's, he might tap. Oh, that's deep. Be. That's deep. But it's not all the way underneath the chin. It's kind of off to the side. Great defense here by Dehosha. Yeah, it's more like a neck crank. Yeah, exactly. That being said, if you, if you put enough pressure on the neck crank, you can force yeah. a tap. Drake has got a really, really strong top game in terms of his ground and pound, so Dehosha's not, not in a comfortable position there. Yeah, Duke Dessie will look to exploit that. Take advantage of the situation. Land some ground nice and elbows. elbows. Nice oh, elbows. Big elbow by Drickus Duke Dessie, the champion. Raining down punishment on his opponent. Oh, nice. Posturing up. Working the body, working the head. Drick is relentless tonight. Dehosha doing a great job of trying to close that distance. He's got to neutralize. He's got to watch for that triangle. Dupas is determined to prove that he's destined for big things. He deserves the belt. Now, Hosh has won four fights by a triangle, and that's... I was about to get that, but you were absolutely right, but he saw that. Oh, oh, oh and here comes the handle. Dupas is relentless on his own power. Still rocks. It's put the beat down on the Hosh. Oh, and the fight is over. Dupas is over again. Again. He defended the title. He did what he aimed to do. He took out the Brazilian. And Trickus is still king of the welterweight. Yeah, Too unbelievable. Good. Too good. He just controlled that fight. Was very well composed. Got taken down. Got the reversal. Stayed on top. Attempted those guillotines. And eventually finished the fight with a TKO. Unbelievable. Still knocks with the elbows. Wow. Pound for pound king. Potentially. I don't know. He's uh, making a case. 100%. Yeah. He's making things interesting, Lamar. You got to give him yeah, credit. 100%. I like the guy. He's a great fighter. Exactly. Yeah, he's a, a great fighter. A humble fighter. fighter. Yeah. 
And uh, wow, just an incredible win. He defends the title. There used to be a curse. It seems like that curse is kind of out the window. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, TNT up. came out tonight and did very, very well. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the MPL action replay. That replay, once he got that reversal with that, with that takedown, that's where the whole fight changed. He just stayed on top, was patient, worked his elbows, worked, worked that ground and pound. Eventually, what Drinkers did very well was able to get that side mount. He trapped the horse's hand, then the horse couldn't move there. Then he just landed those elbows over and over again, and it was all over. Yeah, top game is unbelievable for Drinkers to proceed him on it. Pushed the pressure, and it was unrelenting. Yeah, you can see he's a strong kid, very athletic, very, very strong. And I think he's calling out for Bahadi next. That will be interesting. I know Bahadi's been talking about him. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be a Can't good one. for that one to happen. Yeah. Well done, Drinkers Duplessis. The outstanding performance from Drinkers Duplessis. Overwhelmed his Brazilian opponent, but hats off to the Brazilian. De Rocha, on a week's notice, hopped on a plane, flew 25 hours to take on the best welterweight on the continent. Yeah, 100%. The Rocha comes from a very strong camp, and, and Drinkers just showed him, you know, Drinkers showed up and did what he does best and that's win fight so I'm very excited yeah absolutely outstanding clinical performance from Drickus to proceed we'll have to see how we go from here who's next for the welterweight king got the strap and we'll have to wait we'll hear from him shortly It'll be quite an interesting fight, you know. Drinkers has won most of his fights on the ground. Fighting a guy like Bahati, who is very, very strong. I wonder how he's going to take that fight. Possibly keep it standing? What do you think? A very different prospect, isn't he? Yeah. Yannick Bahati is full of confidence. He's on fire. Two organizational division. It's all happening. So, Drinkers to see triumphs. It's over now to Cyrus Feeds. And ladies and gentlemen, referee Vika Swarta called a stop to the contest at 3 minutes and 58 seconds of round one. Declaring your winner by TKO due to strikes. And still, EFC welterweight champion, Trickus still knocks Duplessis. Yeah. What are you working up on? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, EFC 62, live from the Big Top Arena at Carnival City in Johannesburg, South Africa, this is the main event of the evening. And now, to those in attendance and to the millions of EFC fans around the world, let the battle begin. Five rounds for the EFC Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, the challenger. He's fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a pro record of 10 wins and one loss. He stands 1.85 meters tall, weighing in at 84 kilograms. Fighting out of Pretoria, South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the reigning undisputed EFC welterweight champion of the world. Drickers still knocks Duplessy. And now, introducing his opponent, he's fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a pro record of eight wins and two losses. Standing 1.88 meters tall, weighing in at 83 kilograms, and fighting out of Birmingham, England. Ladies and gentlemen, the reigning, defending, undisputed EFC middleweight champion, Yannick Black Mamba Bahati. And when the action begins, our referee in charge is Brad Bluff. And here's your lovely Hexagon Girls, proudly brought to you by Rex Divic Gearbox, driven by perfection. It's Pumsa, that's Naomi. It's main event time, time to knuckle up and throw down EFC fans. It is Drickus, still knocks Duplessis, our welterweight champ. Going up in weight, 
to take on the middleweight king, Yannick Bahati. Brad Block with last oh, minute of the instructions. Team fought listen to Mark Kamal at all times. Touch gloves. Last it quite. Touch gloves if you want him. Always got your respect for corners. Oh, I just can't believe they wouldn't touch gloves. That's such a surprise. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ooh, you can feel it in the air. This is something special. Oh, they, were, they really want to get at each other. These two get on the face of both of them. And here we go. Round one of a potential five. Round one brought to you by Seven Stars Energy. A big left over the top there by Trickus Duplessis. Oh, man, you know they want to get at each other. In the black of Gianni Bahati. And the white Trickus Duplessis in there, swinging with bad intentions. Yeah, Trickus head hunting earlier on. Gianni Bahati's got those big bombs as well. Mm. Clash of the Titans. Good up the Trickus by took a big shot Trickus, there. but he also took a big lift from Bahati. These two just turned it into a slugfest. I don't know what's going to happen. Right hand by Duplessis now chases it up. Lands it into the shot. big right hand there behind him with the counter punch. But Drinkus is really going after This is the most aggressive I've ever seen Drinkus. Oh, Drinkus. I think this is the most aggressive he's ever been in his life. We've always criticized. He always gets the criticism that he starts off a little bit slow. And right now, he is starting off slow. He's trying to take a page out of Mikhail Overman's book and trying to finish off the high early. He has to pace himself as well. He can't just throw that hard early on for the whole time. Now Bahati throws some shots, and Bahati's looking for the takedown. Duplessis, he's got a hold of his neck. Oh, no. my goodness, he's here we go. This. That's he's a wrap. This. I think he's got him. He's, he's going to tap him. Duplessis has it. He is too strong. He's too strong. We're looking for the tap. Bahati is trying to hold on. Duplessis is squeezing for all his worth. He is a and strong he it. Drink is it. Oh my goodness! He tapped Bahati. He is the king of the middleweight. He took him out. A little insult to injury. Wow. That first slapping him in the face. Fuck. God. Wow. Drink is wow. the real deal. Wow. If you ever doubted it. Bahati is struggling to actually get to his feet. And he's probably seconds from being choked completely unconscious. But you can see how much Drick has actually wanted this crowd. The second the fight started. Wow. The crowd has expected very, very happy with this result. Hey, throw that out the window. He doesn't start strong. That's done. That's over. You see that? You light a fire under wow. Tickets to his knee and you get a pay. Still not taking the title. Two belts. That's history, Dirk. You've seen a lot of it. That's history. Drinkus Duplessis putting a beating on his opponent. The crowd is going bananas in this place. There's Bahati looking for that takedown. Drinkus just wrenching on that neck. It was in deep. You could see it there. He was cranking it in. Bahati tried to reset a couple of times. But you can see he was seconds from being choked unconscious. Squeezing, squeezing, and eventually he had to give up. There was no he hung else on to go. for a while. He hung up as long as he possibly could. This is a guy that knows the jiu-jitsu game. But you talk about that strength of Trickus Duplessis. Duplessis, the crowd losing their mind. He's sitting on top of the hexagon. Is, is I'm going to ask you. Is he the best fighter in EFC history? He has to be right now. After doing is, this, is he there? Did he make it? Doing the impossible. He's 23 years old. Oh. Two division champion. He did the impossible tonight. The trick is to see. My goodness, wow. is he on fire? That young man. There is no limits to where his career could go. Taking it all in as Trick is Duplessis. What a build up to this fight and the fairy tale ending for him. Getting the victory and finishing Bahati in the first round. He landed some crazy punches as well. Bahati was in trouble. He looked for the takedown. He didn't want any more of the stand up. And Trick is grabs. That guillotine choke, and he was not going to let go of that until Bahati's head popped off or until he actually tapped out. That was something special to behold. It was exciting. It lived up to it. It was a lot of fun, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go up to Shane the Duke Wellington. He will put a bow on it.
Ladies and gentlemen, referee Brad Block has called a stop to this contest. One minute and 30 seconds into the very first round. Declaring the winner by tap out due to a guillotine. And the new EFC middleweight champion of the world, Drickus Steel Knox Duplessis. And now, from the Sun Arena, Pretoria, South Africa, the time for talk is over. It's time to knuckle up and throw down. Five rounds for the undisputed EFC Middleweight Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he is a mixed martial artist. Undefeated, three wins, zero defeats. He stands five foot nine inches tall, weighs in at 184 pounds, fighting out of Johannesburg, South Africa. I give you the interim EFC middleweight champion of the world, Brendan Descendant the Star. And now his opponent standing across the cage, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a mixed martial artist with an impressive record of 13 wins, only two defeats. He stands six foot one inch tall, weighs in at 185 pounds. He fights out of Pretoria, South Africa. I give you the reigning, the defending, EFC middleweight champion of the world. Please welcome back to the EFC, Drickus Still Knox And your referee, Brad Block. Dude, you introduced that like never before. Oh, stop it. Here we go. Middleweight championship on the line. There is your champion, Drickus. Your interim champion, Lazar. Final instructions from referee Brad Block. Uh, guys, the title fight, I'm giving you both instructions. Look, I know there's before. mutual respect between these Play two, but I haven't seen times. it much Touch in the build-up. Drick is dismissive of Lazar. There really is a lot of respect, though. Lazar saying there really he's going to... is, but Lazar saying he's going to shock the world again. It's hard, it's hard to go against him. He's never lost. Round one underway, brought to you by Dragon Energy. Nice in the blue, Brendan descendant Lazar. In the white, Drick is still knocks Duplessis. But just don't forget, Drick is, is a master of game plan strategy. He analyzes his opponents with his head coach, Morning Fisser, so effectively. He's come up against bigger and stronger opponents in the past, but always out-strategizes them. Such a good MMA IQ has to proceed. Some wise men have said there are levels to this East. I'm not going to say the real word. I'll get fined. That being said, Drink is Super C has fought all around the world. Is he on another level? Or can he be knocked out just like Gareth McClellan? Both lads coming in with huge amounts of power. And both lads have great right hands that have been the end of their opponents in the past. But just see it's been sold it. The result is Gareth McClellan. Well turned out there. He didn't get much of it. And he's not afraid to throw it. One of the most transcendent stars in the history of this company. Ooh, really Brendan teased it, but popped right back up to Drickus. This, now listen, we talked about this, Simon. Yeah, we did. If he gets drugged into a stand-up war, back and forth, rock em, sock em, robots, that is Lazar's best chance to win this entire fight. We've seen Drickus rocked yeah, before. Is good, though. I mean, don't be he's, he's been rocked, he's gone for the takedown, and submitted his opponent even when he's been wobbled. And we remember what he did to Solich, yeah. the KSW. Yeah, Off his back foot, left hand, knocked him out. I will not sell the stand-up of Drickus Short. 
Both lads really swinging those roundhouses to the flanks and following up with the lefts. Brendan's got a beautiful left hook. He kind of modifies the uppercut, so it's almost like a hook that's coming up through underneath your guard, but it's got a lot of lateral movement there when it hits the jaw. Brendan's starting to check that leg kick now from Duplessis. You know, in different lives outside of the hexagon as well, you talk about the family of Brendan Lazar and what his life is outside of the hex. A full-time fighter is Trigus Duplessis traveling the world. They're at, they're at different points of their life, but that has to be remarked on. Yeah. You got a different type of motivation. I know as soon as my daughter was born, as soon as your daughter was born, you had a new responsibility yeah. that meant more than anything else in this world. And you got to believe that's in the head of Brendan Lazar in this matchup. Both guys are exchanging in very, very close. Brendan does have some very deceptive footwork. He's got a very good takedown defense, but man, he's got a huge gas tank. But that gas tank enters pretty quickly when you come into one of still knocks his right hand, and that's why they can still not. He will put you to sleep. Look at the size difference between the two. He almost thinks about the jumping knee. Jacobs is so big at middleweight. <laughs> Isn't he? Yeah. He is huge at middleweight. He is. And then again, he took the belt, what, from Yannick Bahadi, who was even bigger than him. Yeah, fair enough. How the heck Bahadi ever got down the middleweight? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> he was massive, wasn't he? <laughs> and that left leg kick. Drick is really targeting the left. So the right leg of Lazar. Oh, and there it is. Watch out. It's these, oh, it's these exchanges back. right here that are going to decide this fight. Brendan coming back with a leg kick of his own. Taking away that lead leg also. I'm really surprised that Trick is, is it exploiting maybe going to the ground at this yeah. point. Yeah. I, I, I'm also very surprised. Brendan's got a pretty decent, legit ground game. We saw it in the first season of the fighter. And goodness, we've seen him take a serious shot. I mean, even when he bust his nose up, and Brendan was still able to cut it out for the last 10 seconds and win the entire season with a broken nose. Incredible. Keep in mind, folks, you're watching home. There are a lot of eyes on this matchup. Oh, he's going to watch out because he's up. He put down Brendan. And he's trying to finish as fast as he can. Oh, there it is. Trying to go to slow to him. He's got it. He's trying to finish. Oh, my goodness. Dick is still on Super C. Kicks the middleweight belt of the EFC. Still knocks, is still champion. And Brendan's not happy with himself. He's walking around the hex. I don't think he's happy with the stoppage, but he taps. That is the that goat. Slapped it on. Is that the goat? Oh, he's the goat of the middleweight division, if not the history of the EFC. And there's been some veterans in the sport, but that was absolutely cracking. He shot Brendan. Put him on his back, slapped on the choke. Is he the GOAT in his mid-20s yeah, in the is. EFC? Oh, well, he was the earliest, youngest K1 champion of the world and coming we got, from South Africa. And we got a man that can argue for the GOAT right next to us. I mean, and he's right there in the mix. That is what it's all about. This guy's transcendent. I truly hope that we get to see Trickers to proceed to defend this belt again next year and Brendan Lazar work his way back to the top of the division in the middleweight division but it was that left and the right that put him down a couple of ground strikes that followed up the referee looking very very closely but slapped on that kitchen immediately and Brendan knew he was done it was in so so deep it's that left that came round the side it was a right straight followed by a left hook that came round Brendan Lazar that put it that put him down and we've seen a beautiful guillotine choke just of that style from Dickens to Percy in the past he is so quick when he slaps it on beautiful submission so many he's got in his career and that means so much to him the first time he's fought in his home crowd here in Pretoria and the, what a fantastic victory and a great show of respect from both gentlemen. Absolutely superb. Let's get this official now and send it up to my colleague, Cyrus Beats. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Brad Black calls a stop to the contest at 4 minutes, 15 seconds of round number one. Your winner by tap out to the guillotine choke. And still, EFC middleweight champion, Drickus still knocks to Plessy. What, what an incredible fight. Pretoria, I'm here with your own homeboy, Trickus the Percy. A great opponent, great show of respect, but you've got to be feeling pretty high right now. <laughs> Pretoria, the year is in time, baby! Woo! No, absolutely. 
Thank you to every single person. This is, I promise you, this is the highlight of my career, fighting in front of my hometown. The crowd, the people, you guys are incredible. Leading up to this fight, all the incredible, uh, just the motivation I got from fans, from people just saying they can't wait for the fight. They're watching, I inspire them. It's awesome to hear, just by hearing that, you guys inspire me. All of you that's filling out these seats, this is absolutely amazing. This is the best night of my life of my fight career this far. Thank you very much. I hope we get to see you again fighting.